Darby McDevitt, the narrative director of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, writer of Assassin's Creed Revelations, Embers, and Black Flag, has left Ubisoft. And I'm fucking heartbroken. I'm not really heartbroken. I'm actually really excited, to be honest, because I'm not going to play any Assassin's Creed ever again. So it's actually exciting to see what Darby can do. He's free. He's free of the tyranny of Ubisoft, uh, which is great. But obviously, there is an element of... It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. Darby McDevitt has done so much for Assassin's Creed. I felt like, personally, he's the only one that understands Assassin's Creed. That at least is at the forefront of the development team that's out there in the community. And it's not just what Darby McDevitt did as a writer. You've got to talk about what he did for the community. And and it's got to be said now more than ever, what Darby McDevitt did for the community in 2020. 2020 for the Assassin's Creed community online was horrific. So much came out with fans and, and all of the controversy with the abuse and harassment to fans and developers within Ubisoft, to the women within Ubisoft, from members of the Assassin's Creed development team, of the fan base, and of cast members, voice actors as well. So much went down. It was a dark time for the Assassin's Creed fan base, and to, and watching it over weeks and months, it was tr fucking tragic to, to see good people, lots I consider friends, you know, come out with stories or, or even just be so let down by people they looked up to. And someone like Darby has always been a shining light and continued to be a shining light through that period of time. So I think you can look at all the writing credentials he has. You can look at everything he did writing Revelations. Bloodlines, Discovery, Embers, Black Flag. It's all well and good. But you don't know these people, you don't know these developers personally, and that's why this controversy came out. But what Darby showed is that we can rely on him. When things got tough, he was the one that stood up, answered questions, was there for us as a community, and that, to me, is what stands out. And that's what I'm going to remember about Darby McDevitt the most, is that he was a man of integrity, and he cared more about the community and keeping us whether it be together, there's so many different cliques, if you want to call it that. There's so many different groups. What I'm going to remember about Dark McDevitt is who he was as a man during tough times. And that's, to me, what real men do. And that's what they show. You know? So much came out last year. And to, to prove that so many of these people weren't men. They were abusers. They were weak. They were cowards. This is a man that showed showed his fucking steel to be honest and that's what i want to remember him for the most i want to thank him for the most and that's why he's someone i'm excited to follow their career going forward because he is an amazing writer we already know that we already know that that's not something new but what i really want to highlight is what he did for the community and after black black flag came out after especially valhalla came out he was there answering questions, taking criticism, and taking on the chin. I'm the number one Valhalla hater there is. I fucking, I really am. Let's be honest with ourselves. But he was more than willing to answer questions, talk through it, send me a message. I consider Darby a friend. I really do. I don't know if he thinks of me as a friend after I've berated his last game so horrifically for the past three months. I don't know. But certainly someone who I would call a friend who I trust and I think has done so much for the community. And, and for that, that's that's what earns him my respect mm. for what he did there. We can read out his tweet, his, his final goodbye tweet. Yeah. We can put it on screen. Yeah, please. He says, uh, today is my last day at UBS, uh, Ubisoft Montreal. After a decade of working with brilliant people, creating stories and crea uh, characters from an incredible series and interacting with our wonderful fans, I have decided to set forth on a new adventure. A special thanks to all the fans and content creators that have supported and expanded on our work over the years. Thank you for your kind attention. You have my deepest respect and admiration. It has been an honor of a lifetime to get to know so many of you. And then just a stream of people wishing him good luck and asking yeah. him what he's going to do next. Yeah, dude, he's um, he's he, he's he's a great he's a great man and a great writer. And and the reason I love I uh, love I I dislike strongly Assassin's Creed Valhalla has nothing to do with his ability to write a story. 
I didn't agree with the direction. The quality of the writing's there. There's no doubt about it. The, the, the script work, the character development, it's there. It's just not the story I wanted to see. And that's why I don't like Valhalla. And then all the gameplay reasons, which Darby has nothing to do with. But when you look back at his credentials, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's the best writer Assassin's Creed's ever seen on that team. The script work alone, the moments he gave us, when I think of the best moments in Assassin's Creed, those singular story moments, those character moments, Darby understood characters like no one else. He gives character moments so impeccably. From... Blackbeard's death and Edward there on the ship, like, that's a moment that just stands out to me, the emotional moments with our characters. The end of Revelations is the greatest moment in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Ezio and Altair and Desmond, that convergence of four games, the end of the Ezio trilogy, how do you end? We knew going into Revelations, it's the last game with Altair and Ezio, we're moving on from them, this is the last you're going to see of them, and it's like, how do you end these characters in a meaningful way that matters? You just want to be okay. You want to be able to go, okay, it's fine. That was good enough because it's so hard to nail endings. But he fucking hit a home run. A home run with Assassin's Creed Revelations. Those games cemented what Assassin's Creed is. You want to talk about why Darby and his games changed my life? After Revelations, I started doing YouTube. The reason I'm here, and any of you listen to me, a big part of that is someone like Darby McDevitt. He's a phenomenal writer. He just is. What he did on Revelations was so outstanding. And following it up with Black Flag, the work of the community, thats and that's what matters the most. His writing credentials, A+, plus, we know that. But him as a man, what he did for the community during the hard times, especially last year, can't be understated. That's what needs to be highlighted. He's more than a writer. He's, he's, he's a community friend and ally and a leader. And he's someone we're going to miss dearly. And at the same time, we're going to follow closely and be a huge fan of. And know whatever Darby's a part of, whatever Darby does next, whether he writes his own novel or he's involved in games, movies, whatever he wants to write, we're going to pay attention to him and we're going to support him. And that's credit to him as a person more than him as a writer. We already know he's a great writer, but him as a person is the reason we're going to follow him wherever he goes. So Darby, thank you for all your work over the last 10 plus years at Ubisoft and on the Assassin's Creed series. You're going to be missed by so many fans. And I personally look very much forward to what you're going to do next in the future. It's so exciting. So I, I can't wait. Good luck, mate. Uh, and, and all the best, for sure. Yeah, you, you were saying, Tyler, how as well, um, not just within the Assassin's Creed franchise, but also um, the influence of that kind of, of script-driven storytelling um, and uh, how that honestly pioneered a genre of gaming Mm. that then saw the likes of games like the last of us games like you know red dead redemption Mm. um do you think that that darby and his work on on truly cinematic style scripting Mm. for games Mm. pioneered this this genre that that we all know and love today which is is that Mm. you know you know these games that we you know that we have characters that we truly emotionally connect to Do do you think he was part of that pioneering process i don't know i don't know about pioneering um but i certainly would say championing it it's it's not resurgence, but its rise in video games today. Because when you look back at Revelation, that's 2011. That's when, you know, Skyrim came out. Red Dead Redemption 1 came out the year before. Like, this is when the story... Uh, the Uncharted's were in their peak. These are when these story-driven games are coming through. And, and the reason Assassin's Creed stands among all those amazing games and franchises that you mentioned, David, is because of writers like Darby McDevitt. And what he did on Assassin's Creed. He brought Assassin's Creed to that level where it was respected and is respected in many ways. Maybe not as much as it used to be, but but back then for sure, in those ways and when people remember Assassin's Creed, so many of them will say their favourite game was Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. So many of them will say it's Revelations. Like, And the reason that is, is the story. As much as anything else. And he really brought Assassin's Creed to that level. And he needs to be credited for that, of course, for sure. So I don't know about pioneering. I, d- I don't know. But but certainly a huge, huge part of why Assassin's Creed stands among those great games like the Red Deads, like the Uncharted, like The Last of Us, um, in terms of its story and its characters. You know, we're going to remember Ezio and we're going to remember Edward. Those are memorable characters. 
and and they're going to go on and those are and those are you know a part of Derby's history so um, he deserves all the credit for that for sure.